Hey, YouTube subscribers and everybody else serious about going to heaven. I keep repeating this because this is the last days. If you're serious about going to heaven, you listen to my videos and other videos that are making sense and uh, agreeing to the scripture on YouTube and everywhere else you research it. So this purpose of this video here is to show you the fake Jews, what those fake Jews that are in Israel now, to show you what the feasts are, how fake those feasts are, and how unbiblical those feasts are. Because a lot of you are still in Messianic churches thinking you are doing the Jewish stuff, those are the people who are given the law. No, those are fake. You can even see them. I mean, your spirit should make you discern now which is error, which is truth. No, those people are fake, pure, hundred percent full blown real fake okay so this video is showing you the fake feasts their feasts how unbiblical one by one i'll unpack them here so you can see them and understand that that is wrong okay now in olden times you ran away from um the the pagan stuff Okay, a lot of the Christian churches still doing, practicing the pagan stuff, the Easter rabbit, the tree, Christmas tree, and I mean, the father, Sonin, is even condemning these things in plain sight in the Bible. But a lot of people still doing it. So you became smart and started avoiding them, say, Tomba, you're not going to do any pagan stuff anymore. You're going to run towards the real thing. Okay, going to run towards the real thing. Now, you think the real thing is what the Jewish people is doing and now the part of the video is to show you that no that is still wrong you ran away from the fake you right walk right straight into another fake so the devil knows what is you know what your people gonna be doing what we people actually because i'm i was deceived too by him so he knows exactly what we're going to be doing how and now he's placing all contingency plan in case you fall from this you run from this he puts another option that option is put by him again Okay, so you ran from the Christian stuff, which is the those trees, the rabbits and Halloween and all those Yanus and stuff that they be celebrating. So you ran away from that, good. But then you fell right into another one, which is what I'm going to expose today. That another one is as wrong as that rabbits and eggs and, and trees. Okay, so now let's look at one by one all of these fists that these Jewish people are feeding us. Okay, and now my basis for all of this is Leviticus 23 because everything got to be biblical. Everything got to be talking to the scripture, got to be written in the Bible, not just in the Bible because the Bible, remember now, is a compilation of books from different people. Some are fake, some are real. So everything got to be agreeing with the scripture, everything tie in together. Then you know that is the real thing. Okay, because a lot of the books are written by a hearsay mark, a Dr. Luke, and a friend of Paul, this and the Roman. So you, you don't want to just catch any book. It's like you walk into a library and get any book you want. No, you choose the ones that are making sense, that are agreeing with the scripture. The old Isaiah, Daniel, all those prophets that agree with whatever they're writing or is bogus, especially if they didn't even walk with the Savior. I mean, they faked Matthew. God, Matthew walked with the Savior, but he did not write any book. Matthew did not write the book of Matthew anyway. I showed in my other video why I'm saying that it's all in third person. Because if you write your own book, you'll say, I did this with the book of Matthew. God, no, no, the book of Matthew, God, he did, they did, and some later. And he says, no, no, that's not Matthew wrote up anyway. So now you have to always agree with the scripture. Whatever you read, you got to always agree with the prophets with all prophets with what the savior said then you know so this here these feasts that the jewish people is doing have to first agree with the scripture with the leviticus 23 that's where all the feasts at and then suddenly repeats it in deuteronomy in numbers but it's the same thing so when he first gave it in leviticus 20 it's all summarized nicely in there to say Tell the children of Israel, Moses, tell the children of Israel, this and this, they must do this on this date, this, this, on this date. It's so clear. But the problem is, they, they, these white men, when they came here, they did not want you all to be reading and trying to discover things and stuff. First thing they did is to attack your ability to read. Why? Why, why can't you just sit down and ask, why is this thing happening? Why? Because an attack is, is a visionary uh, action. Let me put it that way. So, when you get attacked now, it's because of some outcome that you are endangering whoever is attacking you with. So they don't want you to, to produce that outcome, so they attack you. 
You understand? So in anything, in anything, so they attack your ability to read because they know the outcome of you starting to read, you're going to discover these kind of things. You're going to read the Bible and know the scripture, know the difference between fake and truth. And then you start doing the right things. And they don't want you to do the right things. So now I'm exposing these fake Jews. Because now I don't know why in the past two I have not been reading. But I mean, with this Bantu awakening, a whole lot of things are starting to get revealed. And I'm starting to see things. And I'm sharing them here with you. And a lot of you too are sharing stuff with me. And I appreciate that. So you have to keep on, keep on reading on your own. Not depending on them Sunday churches, which are bought by the government anyway. They are signed up there. They don't pay taxes. They don't pay this because they are signed up to say, we are not going to talk about this. We are not going to let this ship through the crack. We're not because they are protecting this beast system. So you have to make sure you study on your own. Okay. So now let's go on to reveal these fake Jews. Okay. The fake feast. So for y'all, the purpose of y'all in the Messianic churches, you Bantu, you black people, you earthly beings. Okay, who have a chance to go on to heaven when you call on Sonin. You gotta first call on Sonin. If you're an, an earthly being, you gotta first call on Sonin to make it. Now, the Bantu people, children of Israel, at least they have somebody who already died for them. So he said he died for them. So if they're not, not calling on Sonin, probably then he's gonna tell them that no, there were, there gotta be some reasons, but maybe not, because there is a certain cut. If you read Daniel 7, there's a certain call that's going to happen. They might get judged and thrown to hell for not calling. I'm talking about the bunch of people. So you have to all call on the son and read son in his word in the Bible. Leviticus 23. Now that's the focus, the feasts. Okay. I'm not talking about anything else. The feasts. Now the fake Jews, let's look at what the fake Jews got out there. The fake Jews got Passover. Here's the chart. Look at it. They call it bigger holidays, so they divide it into spring holidays and fall holidays. Now, in the in, it's it's not even because in fall, that's summer, but in their pagan world, it's fall. But in the in the days of the Savior, it's um it's summer. Okay, but anyway, they call it spring holidays and fall holidays. Okay, so now they got Passover, uneven bread, first fruit. Let's look at the first three first. Okay, because they sort of lump them together. So the Passover, they have, um, now when we look at it, we look at it from left to right. Okay. So starting with the Passover, Passover, first of all, is, is on the 14th day of the month. Okay. Hold on, hold on. Maybe let me start small before I be confusing with all the other things. Now let's analyze this using Passover and unleavened bread lump together. Why? Because the Jewish people, they lump these together. In a, in a span of certain dates. I'll show you just now. So in a span of certain dates, they say this is Passover and then unleavened bread comes in before even Passover is over. So they run together and then first fruit comes in and the three run together at a certain point. So that's why I'm saying, let's first start with the two, the Passover and unleavened bread. Okay. Now let's look at what the Bible first say before we start looking at scrolls. So you saw what the Jewish people is having there. They got a Passover, they got a living bread, and then they got a first one. So, but first let's look at the two. Okay. Now the Bible says in uh, Leviticus 23, that's where everything is 23. So from one up to the bottom. So 23. Now here I put two versions. <clears throat> it's the same Bible, which is scriptures. It's called scriptures. Now, that same Bible is called Scriptures has been updated with all this new revamping, new satanic kissing, making the Bible satanic. Okay, I call it satanic kissing, <laughs> the Bible. So, with all this renewal of the Bible and, and all these changes, they made the version that I was using before was a 1992 version. Now, they've made it in 2009. They've made a whole lot of changes, but the changes of the context. Is see still the same, but they've changed the meaning, the names, and try to be confusing so you can easily fall into the pagan. But unfortunately, when they made this change, I had already done my other video. You can watch it on YouTube. I think a few months ago, about three months ago, I made a video where I'm showing you all the feasts, a comprehensive view of all the feasts, and I was referencing with the 92 Bible. At the time, the 2009 was not an online override. In other words, the 1992 right now, you will not find it online anyway. The online Bibles do not have 92. They only got 2009. But at the time I was doing a video, I was fortunate to do 
to have the 1992. The 2009 was not yet updated online. Okay, so Sonini, thank you for that because now when this this folk this fakes started updating the Bible online, they were two days late because by the time they updated that, I already had my video out with the 1992 real deal stuff. Okay, so now let's read the 1992. So if you got an online version, you will see the 2009 that I've put there online on there too. Okay, now 92 says, in the first month, on the 14th day of the month, between evening to evening, you know how, is the Passover to So Nini, okay? Or to Nini, here you can say Nini, but you gotta say So, you know, it's a reference thing, like Mr. So, it's the Passover to So Nini, okay? So, in the first month, now the, the 2009 will say, in the first new moon, in Bantu language, a moon is a Nyanga, a Nyanga is a month, so it's the same word. So, a full a new moon, the first new month, okay, new moon, that, that's still correctly, is the Pesach, they're putting their Jewish, Hebrew, fake names there. So, now, it says, in the first month, on the 14th day, that's what the Bible says now, okay, that's what scripture says, 14th day. So, that means, you look at the chart there, put it together for you, easy. So, Passover, 14th day of April, okay, that's a Passover, right? Now, focus on that. And then the next is, now, I didn't put it up there. The next is, on the 15th, just after, it's no longer Passover. It's done with Passover. We start a new thing now called Unleavened Bread, which goes on for seven days. Okay? Let me pull it up. Let me pull it up here. Let me pull it up for you. I'm going to pull it up. I'm going to pull it up. Hold on. Let me pull it up. Let me pull it up. There you go. Hold on. I need to pull up the, the unleavened bread for you so you can see that the Bible says nothing about what they are saying we should be doing. It says nothing about... There you go. So, first, on the 14th day, between this is Passover first. And then for seven days, it says on the 15th day, you look 20, Leviticus 23, 6. On the 15th day of this month is the festival of unleavened bread, Susonini. Okay, that's the, now the 15, look at the chart. And on the first day, you have a set-apart gathering, on, you do not work, that's like a, truly like a Sabbath day. And you shall bring an offering made of fire for seven days. So that means the unleavened bread is for seven days. So the first day is a Sabbath, and the last day is a Sabbath. Look at 23, 8 day. You shall bring an offering. On the seventh day is a set-apart gathering. Now remember, we had the first day set-apart gathering, and the seventh day, seven about gathering. So the first and the seven days are Sabbaths, okay? Of this seven day unleavened bread. Now you have to look at this chart so you can understand what's going on. So on the 14th is Passover, done, one day. On the 15th is the start of the unleavened bread, going on for seven days. That's it, from 15th to 21. That's unleavened bread, seven days. That's what the Bible says, all right? That's what the Bible... <laughs> now, let's look at what them fake Jews are saying. Let's first highlight what's wrong with them fake Jews before we even open it. Their dates are wrong, and the number of days is wrong. So, which means they don't have our 14th day, 15th day, that kind of thing. No, they don't have none of that like that. According to what the Bible, I just showed you what the Bible says. They don't have it like that. And they don't have that seven-day thing I showed you just now. Where you got an even bread going on for seven days. I don't have none of that. Here is what them fake Jews got. I'll show you just now. Here. I put a comparison too. The fake Jews got on the 10th. That's their start of Passover. <laughs> and then their Passover goes on for seven days until the 18th. And that's the end of the Passover. Okay. So now their Passover is... Even on the wrong day, because the, the Bible says, the scripture says on the 14th day of the first month. First month is April, everybody knows now. You watch my other video, how the Bantu naming of the month is. Because there's fake Jews, at least they kept the Bantu naming, which is according to Sonny. So, now the, the, the first month is April. So, the fake Jews got April 10th, that's the start of the Passover, which is wrong. It's got to be the 14th day. Look at the above one, the above chart, which is showing you the real stuff. So, and then they got seven days going on to 18th, which is wrong. Passover is just one day, and then we're done with it. And then they skip. So, from the end of Passover, just the next day is some one lousy day for unleavened bread. April 19th, and that's it. 
I mean, that's so much injustice to unliving bread. You know what unliving bread is about? Unliving bread is about purifying you, getting rid of... I mean, watch the video I loaded two days ago about unliving bread. Unpacking what the unliving bread is for. These people are really robbing people from the benefit of, you know, what the Father, Son, and He created everything for. It, I mean, made all these things as checkpoints for us. Now, they're, they're just scrapping now. So, no, do the Passover, seven days, and then a lousy one day for unliving bread. And that's it. And then they talk about, no, uh, we, we, you know, this Passover, this feast are pointing to a future something. And, and then when it's fulfilled, we don't, it's just so bogus. Now let's look at, um, let's look at, so now they say this, this Passover and unliving bread is for, um, the, the savior died. And then that's the Passover symbolizing Passover. And then unliving bread, he was buried. So that's the burial. Okay. And then, then the first one. Now let's look at the, the Savior's death. They just wrote him as Jesus. The, the Savior's death was Passover. He was Passover him, died, and that's it. Unliving bread got nothing to do with him being buried. And they say, no, unliving bread is his burial because he was the bread put in an oven. Unliving bread put in an oven. So he's buried in it. No. Unliving bread is about purifying yourself for seven days. Purifying regardless of there is a savior, there's nothing. You are just getting rid of living. Living is something that causes you to sin. Beware of the living of the Pharisees. Watch my uh, video I loaded two days ago. That's what living bread is. Living bread has got nothing to do with the savior dying and the savior not dying. and what. It's about purifying yourself. Beware of the living of the Pharisees. Because one living leavens the whole, one piece of living leavens the whole bread. You are the bread. Then you go out there. If you are living, you are injected by the living from the, which is poisonous preaching, poisonous doctrine. You go being a living, a, a, a wrong bread which is full of the living from the Pharisees or whoever is bad influence in your life or wh whatever. I mean, watch my other video. Okay, I'm, I'm making details in it. I'm putting details in it. So here they say Passover is connected to the unliving bread because now he died and then he's buried. And then now they're shooting themselves because they have to have something coming out of being buried. Then they say, no, first fruit is the resurrection. Uh, he came up with a resurrection. No, first fruit got nothing, totally nothing to do with the Savior dying and not dying, whatever. The first time the first fruit was given is when the Canaan, when they, the children of Israel were told to go into Canaan. The father didn't say a certain date. Unlike the Passover, he said the 14th day of first month, and then on the 15th day, and even bread for Sunday. He didn't say nothing about the first fruit. The first fruit said, on that day when you go in there, I didn't say what day, he said, go in there. Reap whatever you sow. I mean, you're going to go in there and plant for whatever months. He didn't even say to them, I give you three months to plant and grow everything and then bring the grain. No, he didn't tell them what. He just said, go into Canaan, plow in there. Then the day is when it's harvest. Then you bring all that harvest. That harvest is called first harvest, first fruit. Okay. That's the, so you bring that first fruit into the temple. Now, there's a priest, a Levite guy waiting for you. To, he give it to him. And then what he's going to do, he's going to wait for the next Sabbath. So if you bring it on a Wednesday, he's going to wait Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And then that Saturday, the, the day after Sabbath, Sabbath is Saturday. Day after Sabbath, then he's going to wave offer. He's going to wait, literally take, pick it by hand and wave it in the air like he's brushing the air. Wave it in the air. That's called wave offering. So first fruit and wave offering go hand in hand together. Now, these people, they say, no, first fruit is resurrection. Got nothing to do with that. First fruit and wave offering, I just explained now. You can even watch my other video where I'm explaining. Biblically, I'll even show you in this video right here. Got nothing to do with the Savior died in Passover and then he's buried and living bread and then first fruit is rejected. No, those three feasts are totally independent of each other. They totally not talk to each other like that. They don't have any purpose that's interdependent. But now the fake Jews, they're independent. They're interdependent. Those three, I know because he got he to gotta die first and then unliving bread, bury, and then he rises up on the third day being a first fruit. No, not at all. That's not what those things are. The first fruit is to, is to uh, um, let me start with the Passover. The Passover is to commemorate that we've got a, a, a lamb that died for us every time, every year. We've got to keep reminding us. The Father, Sonini, gave us that Passover. To show us that he saved us in Egypt. He even said it. 
Do this so that you can keep remember. If your kids ask you, why are you doing this, uh, mommy, dad? You tell them, no, because he saved, son, and he saved us from Egypt. So that's the purpose of the Passover. We got to keep doing it. So we know who is saving us, who's doing stuff for us on earth, who's saving us every time. So the Passover, the purpose is for us to keep telling our kids and generations to go on. That this, But now the kids don't know none of this because them fake Jews said, no, that's just for death. And then unleavened bread for the, they twisted everything and they made job black people everybody to not read to not study that's the first attack they did make you not study so you can uncover this stuff for yourself now they say no the Passover and then they tell me I'm living the purpose of living is to purify yourself regardless of you gotta save or not you get rid of and of living Living is anything that swells, make you swell, make you puff up, make you be a wrong, make you, uh, make you unliving. I mean, you make you living. So you are supposed to be unliving, unpuff up, and you, you, and you get my drift. But then they, then they go on to say, first fruit is the river. First fruit is the fruit. The first thing that you get your first paycheck. I even made an example in my video. It's your first everything, your first job, your first paycheck, your first fruit, your first any benefit you get from whatever the Sonini gave you on earth. He gave the children of Israel Canaan. Then whatever first fruit they rip up of there, they wave it to Sonin. Okay, wave offering to Sonin. Then you Sonini gives you a, a job, your first paycheck, you wave it to Sonin with your own hand. Because Sonin understands you don't have a priest, you don't have a temple, you wave it with your own hand, the paycheck. Alright? If you got an ATM card, you wave whatever you got to show that whatever is getting paid, your first pay is a dedication to Sonin. You wave it to Sonin. Okay? Physically, not spiritually. Now we're in spiritually we no, those people are lying. You do it physically. Okay? And then, because if they, nothing was physically, they wouldn't be going on naming things 11, 9, 11, September 11. The, the, every physical thing is associated with the spiritual thing. What happens on earth, so be it in heaven. Everything is associated. Okay? So now, Passover, first fruit, uh, unleavened bread, that three is really not linked together at all. The fake Jews are lying. Now, let's look at now. Where, what, what the dates are for these things. They got their Passover on, okay, I showed you the dates for the Passover and living bread. Cause the 10th, which is totally wrong. Now let's look at the dates for first fruit. The first fruit now, they don't know where to put it because now remember it's not connected to this, but they're trying to fit it in where well, I fit get in. So now that first fruit, they jump, put it in the April 16th, right in between their Passover. That six, April 16th got nothing to do with none of it, the, but they put it in there. They said, no, first fruit, boom, is there. He's, he's resurrected in there. I don't even know if they, they even explain why they're saying a, a resurrection because now he's not ended as a Passover lamb, according to them now. But they, they put it in and say, first fruit is April 16th. And then all them black people in Messianic church, I was one of them. I'm not even looking at them, judging them. We, we, I was in Messianic church, so I know all these feasts. We used to do them. So, but we, we, we go in there and we, we do every feast first. We think we're serving our father, the son. No, these people are just lying to us. So, they put first fruit in April 16th, which is right in the middle of everything. Which is not here is a, a schema, a schema for you know, according to them, the Bible, Leviticus 20. This is how the new, the, the first fruit and wave offering concept work according to how the father, son, and his gave it to us. Okay. Now, I'll read it for word for word. Now, you got to be patient with me. I'm not a patient person to look word for word. But then, I mean, for the sake of my conversation with you, i got to put it in there, one word for word. Now, Leviticus 23, 10, the father, son, and say, Speak to children of Israel, talking to Moses. Now, you all already know who was given the Moses. Say, Speak to children of Israel, and you shall tell them, when you come into the land, which I give you, which we know is Canaan, and shall reap the harvest, then you shall bring a sheaf of first fruit of your harvest to the priest. Now you, you see exactly what I've just said. Bring the sheaf. Now a sheaf is just a measure. It's like your first fruit, but you could say bring a bag of first fruit or bring a sack, or, you know, but you just you say sheaf. Of first fruit of your harvest to the priest. You get that? And in he shall now, this 11, and he shall wave the sheep before the, the sheep before Sonini for your acceptance. And the more, and then the following day, the morrow after Sabbath, the priest waves it. 
You understand now? So that priest got to have that in there, get it, wave it. Okay? And then Leviticus 15 say, and from the following day after Sabbath, from that day you brought the sheaf, wave for it. You shall count for yourself seven completed Sabbaths. You see in the schema I put in it. So remember, the, the priest had to wait for that first Sabbath day first, and that Sabbath day is Sabbath zero. It's ground Sabbath. Okay? Sabbath zero. Then the next Sabbath is Sabbath one, Sabbath two. Count seven Sabbath. On the seventh, you Start counting one, two, three, a further 50 days. Then that's totaling 94, right? Then you repeat the same thing. Whatever your check is on that 94th day, you wave it as they were, were first offering two. You came at So here we read it, uh, 2315. And from that following day, you count seven completed Sabbaths, okay? Which is until the following day after the seventh Sabbath, which is now the seventh, the 49th day, which is her, you count. 50 days, that means add another 50 days on top of that seven sevens. See the schema there? I've put it for you in the picture so you can see a diagram. Then you shall bring a new grain offering to Sonin again. So you repeat that same thing. New grain, wave offering. New grain, wave offering. See? And then you're done with that paycheck. Then you can have all your checks following that. You know, can relax now on shopping and stuff. But before then, you must make sure first that first offering... Within the 94th day, say you can use it, use it, use it. But on the 94th day, don't use it. Do the same thing, bring it, and it gets wave offered. That's what the first fruit and wave offer. Now, them fake Jews now we already know they cannot have wave offering because first fruit, they already push it down. They push it down to the other feast that's trivial. They say, no, it's the resurrection of the Savior. Nothing to do with this. So they automatically cannot have the wave offering. Look, there's their chart to put it back. They don't have any wave offering. The only thing they got now, they say, no, uh, first, you count 50 days and have a Pentecost. There's no even Pentecost. Look, look at Leviticus 23. Nothing talks about Pentecost. They don't have any wave offering there. And the reason I just explained, because they are shooting themselves in the foot. So when they ask Rabbi, if you read it, ask Rabbi, Rabbi, where's wave offering? Because I saw in Leviticus 23, he's going to start duck and diving and avoiding you. I'm telling you. Because I did that, I asked Rabbi, Rabbi, man, I, I got questions here. And Rabbi was running and running and duck and diving my questions. I could just see, okay, he thinks that I'm trying to be a smart behind you in his church. But this is exactly what's going on out there. You got to watch for this stuff. Because these feasts are really important. These are called Sabbaths. Sabbath. Even the Savior on the cross said, Eli, Eli, Elama Sabbath, Tane. This, this is for Sabbath keepers. So you have to keep these Sabbaths. These are Sabbaths. It's not just the fourth commandment, which is keep the seventh day holy, seventh day. That's not the only Sabbath. These are called Sabbaths too. Okay? All right. Now, let's look at the Pentecost. Pentecost is not anywhere. That Pentecost thing they put in, it's not anywhere in the Bible. The video is 23. Nah, nothing says nothing about that. So the fake Jews here, they are really messing everything up. And you can even already predict why. You can already see why. Why are they doing this? Fake, fake, fake. Totally fake. No, no Pentecost in Leviticus 23 because we're following the scripture, right? All of us. No, and then nobody's interpreting nothing here. We are reading word for word. Just read it for you. Word for word. Leviticus 23 got nothing to do with Pentecost. The only time we're counting anything 50. Anything more than seven days is like seven forty nine days is when we are doing that wave offering, and then we have a break of ninety four days. We use our checks wherever one, and then on the ninety fourth day we repeat the same thing. That's the only counting we have. The other things is seven days for this seven days. Nothing about fifty days and some Pentecost, and there's no Pentecost feast anywhere. That's a pagan thing. And the only people talking about this Pentecost is Paul in First Corinthians, and then there will be Matthew and Luke talking about this this same um, feast. Matthew is not written by the Matthew guy. I keep saying that because the Matthew guy would not have written that he's an apostle. But whoever wrote that book of Matthew, who because Matthew was rubbing shoulders with them hard shots, so because he was a test collector, only learned in the twelfth. So he probably was running with the hot shot, and the hot shot convinced him and started listening to what he's saying, and they replicated what he, you'd be talking about. And they started writing a book, probably in, in his absence even. But book of Matthew was not written by Matthew at all. You can even see it's not, it's agreeing with Paul and then Pagan, Luke and Mark. And Peter too. 
Because Peter, that Peter in there is not the Peter, the fisherman who is always adventurous. I want to walk on water. Can I do this? Can I do the Savior? Oh, Savior, you are not going to die. I'm here. I'm protecting you. That's not that Peter. The first Peter, second Peter is some serious lawyer guy who wrote that book. It's not that same Peter who I'm describing now. So when you study your Bible, you study at the characters. Everything must agree with each other. Okay? So now, so that Pentecost is nowhere in the Bible. Totally nowhere. Okay. And then let's look at the next three, which is now the trumpets, atonement, and tabernacles, which the pagans call them Rosh Hashanah, which in, in their language you call the head of years. Rosh is a head, and then Hashanah is years. So Rosh Hashanah. That's what they say, because they say trumpets is the beginning of the year. So it's the head, or it's the beginning, it's the it's top of the year. So it's, it's a Rosh Alpha, the Hashanahs. Oh, please. Trumpets had nothing to do with it. Trumpets is just a sounding alarm. Because the Father gave us that feast to say, that feast, it's trumpets. No, that, when he, was, when he gave us to the children of Israel, he said, you're going to blow trumpets on that day. It's like an alert thing so that everybody know what time it is now. Okay? Blow the trumpets. Everybody got to blow trumpets. That's just trumpets, trumpets, sounding noise. Then, that's now the first, October 1st. October 10th, fasting. Fasting, fasting, fasting. You can already know why this fasting now. Because it's just one day fasting, everything. Then tabernacles were in the booth. Go out the camp with the father. Now, you won't see the father, but just go out the camp. You know, the father appreciate the fact that you're doing what he told us to do. Because he told us to go out camping. Take your camp, pull your trailer, take your camping gear. Go out there and camp. Tabernacles is camp for seven days. Then children of Israel used to camp in tents. Take their tents, pull them up. Go to the father, or circle around the father's uh, tent or at the tent of meeting or wherever the cloud is. They were sitting around there. That's what they used to do in the tabernacles or booths. They called it booths. For seven days full, the father teaching them, talking to them, eating with them, literally being with them. That's what happened then. So now he said, we got to keep doing this feast. He told Moses, Moses, tell the children of Israel, they got to keep doing this stuff because that's the stuff that reinstates my relationship with them every year, every year. All this feast got to be done. But now them white people came and them devils and them tares. Tares are now black people who are evil too, planted by the devil. They are black, but they're planted by the devil. So we start copying them. We think this is societal things. This is how tradition works. And we don't read it for ourselves. Because let the Bible be there. Let the scripture be untouchable. But then, the people made us not to read the stuff. And they don't teach us in the Sunday churches anyway. Even in the Sabbath church, they don't teach them. None of this stuff. Instead, they teach this one that is fake, which is I'm exposing now. So y'all know that if you think you're in the right track because they got some few names, Passover, Unliving, oh, they're in the right track. No, they don't have it the right way. And they're taking away the benefit out of these names, out of these feasts. They're using the right names, but they're taking away the benefit, the purpose of these feasts. They're taking it away and assigning it to a pagan agenda. Now, you have to look at, so these trumpets, atonement, and the tabernacles. Now I put them all three of them because at least they they got um they got okay the name is good except the pentacles which they put in there we don't belong. Now they got the name, but now let's look at what is the Bible saying about that three before we start analyzing these people because their dates are wrong. First of all, like there's usual them fake pagans they got their own dates for their own reasons. The date, dates are wrong. Now the Bible says um the children of Israel the first day of the month. Which is now the seventh month. Seventh month is October, according to pagan naming, which is seventh month. In, in Banji, it's the, it's the seventh month. So, seventh month, on the first day of the month, you have the rest blowing the trumpets, set apart gathering. Okay, that's a Sabbath day. All of these are Sabbath. So, which is October 1st. Okay, the, the sun even calls it the new moon. Okay, so October 1st. That's the only feast that's on the new moon, anyway, which is. Um, on the first of the month, so you have a set about gathering, blowing trumpets. Okay, that's twenty-four. Then twenty-seven, which is because twenty-three, twenty-seven, on the tenth day of the seventh month, which is same month. This is all in October. On the tenth day, on in, is the day of atonement. Okay, now you remember now the fake Jews will have the names, but we'll have all in different different dates. 
Now, on the day of atonement, on the seventh, in the seventh, on the tenth day, okay, which is October tenth, is the day of atonement. It shall be set apart garden for you, and you shall afflict your beings, and shall be afflict means fast. Not do those pierced things. Uh, some African people be doing those p- scary. It even scares me to death when I see them pierce and their lips and ears pull it. That's so e- demonic. You know, you don't do stuff like So you shall afflict yourself. That means fasting. Okay. And then Leviticus 23, um, 34. Speeches are saying on the 15th day of the 7th. My vision now, October 15th now. is the festival of the booth. Okay. Now that's 14th evening. You know, remember now, 14th evening, that's the start of the following day. So you, you do the booth for seven days. So it's from the 14th, from the 15th to the 21st evening. Okay. That's the booth, the seven days booth. Okay. And then on the first day is the Sabbath gathering. You do no work. And then for the seventh day is bringing a grill. You know, Sonin likes the grill. So the main thing is on these days, you just grill, grill, grill. Okay, your food gotta be grilled. You just make sure you don't, you know, you don't eat take uh, takeaways or uh, you just grill your your meat. The meat gotta be grilled. If you eat meat, you gotta just have it grilled. Okay, if you don't have enough meat, sure. I mean, Sonny can see all this stuff. He sees your effort. If you're not even trying, then he knows you're not even trying. If you're trying, you don't have the resources. You don't have a sheep. You don't have a stuff to. He he can see that. But try do your part. Okay, so he knows that if he gives you the roses, you'll use them to, to what he wants you to. Okay, now, so so there's atonement. So that's what the Bible says. The Bible says we got to do the trumpets on the first. We got to fast on the 10th. On the 15th, we got to do the booth. 15 to 21, do the booth. And then we have a closing festival. That's all that happens in October. Now, the fake Jews, let's look at what they have. So the Bible, what they, the Bible says now. Let's look at them. fake Jews. Fake Jews got... Where's them dates? I got them dates. Where's them Jewish dates now? Okay, there we go. The Jewish dates we have, they, their trumpets, they call it Rosh Hashanah, okay? Their trumpets is in September. Got nothing to do with what the, what Sonini say. They say it's the Jewish New Year. It's not a new year. Trumpets, trumpets is to call everybody an assembly, to call it Trump. So that Rosh Hashanah, they call it Trump, it's trumpets is called Rosh Hashanah. So they say in, uh, it's in September. It's not in, on the first, the Bible states, scripture says, on the first month, first month, but I'm not month, on the first day of the seventh month, which is October 1st. Because now we're using whatever we got now, so then you can see. If he gives us the right one, we'll use that one. So we're trying to use the right one. So what we got here is the is the pagan calendar, but at least the, the months, the cycle of the months never changed. So there, there will always be the first month up to 12 months, first month to 12 months. We just got to know which one is the first month. Okay. So now the seventh month, which is October. Now them pagans, they, they're using September. And then they got the atonement, which is in our Bible, the scripture says on the 10th day of October. Now, the pagans got September 30th is their atonement. And then the Bible says on the 15th day, we got the tabernacles for seven days. The pagans got their um, tabernacles on October 5th to the 6th, 7th, so 5th to 11th. That's the seven days they are signing to this, um, to do, do, which is totally wrong because it says on the 15th to the 21st. That is 21st evening, first evening. So the whole seven days, 15th, from 15th, we got to have the booth, go out camping. Them pagans, they don't have, na- so the pagans, they got their names, but they got the dates twisted. So they're not following what the scripture is saying either. But we, Bantu, looking at the, uh, the Bible, at the scripture, we got to follow exactly what the scripture says. So the pagans are really lying to everybody. Okay, now let's look at, um, so, you know, you, you have to make sure, I mean, the, the, then the closing festival, they don't even have that in there. Uh, and, and the book says, the Bible says, scripture now, scripture says we have on the earth, look at Leviticus 23, 35 says on the, on the, on the eighth day, there shall be a set apart gathering. Now eighth day, that's after the seven day booth. Okay. Now we're coming back from the camp. 
says, On the eighth day it shall be set apart gathering for you, and you shall bring an offering made by fire to Sonini. It's a closing festival. You do not work. It's a Sabbath day. It's a closing festival. You must do a grilled offering. Do, do an offering made by fire. Grill. But now we can't bring anything. We don't got a temple. But you got to still grill. Do something. Don't just sit around. Do something. It's a, it's a Sabbath day. It's a closing festival. Acknowledge all of these Sabbaths. But the fake Jews don't have a closing festival. Why? Because they don't want to see this as a continue, as something that is given for purpose and then we're closing. Because they already got a beginning of the year in Rosh Hashanah. So they can't close the year after three, two feasts. Because now we, after Rosh Hashanah, we got the, the atonement and then the booth. Then they can't have a closing because now they already started. You know, they are shooting themselves in the foot. So, so, so they cut out the closing festival. You see, so you have to follow what the Levitical saying. So instead of running to the Messianic church, because now that you become a smart by smart person, you, you see, you don't want this pagan stuff. You can see now they're pagan, you're enlightened a little bit. You start running away from the pagan stuff. And the first step is the Jewish people. You're still in the wrong. Because those Jewish people are fake. I just showed you now. They're doing everything wrong. I mean, their name of the month is Tammuz and them. They're just way off. So the first thing you'll be running to is the Bible. Leviticus 23. If you really want to know, keep the, the uh, Sonini Sabbath. Run to Leviticus 23. You'll be good. Okay? That's the best thing you can do for yourself. Don't be believing all them lies and them pagans and, you know. Run to the Bible and read for yourself. You know, nobody now is prohibited from reading. Everybody can read now. In, in, in Africa, where the Bantu, is, the Bantu homeland was set up in the southern part of Africa in 1962. That's the first time it was set up, called the Bantu Stand. And was, so the, the Bantu people were given their own, you know, and in that time, they were given a Bantu education. And that Bantu education did not let them see this kind of stuff. There was no Bible. Fortunately, I was still there. I was part of them. But 1962, I mean, I wasn't born then. But the people who were, you know, my relatives, were, they, were, they, they told them, I mean, everybody talks about these stories. Nobody was able to be reading stuff like this. They had a, a, something they called JC. That was part of, you know, you went up to stand, uh, grade four. Is it for grade four, grade eight? They call it standard. So standard six. That was the highest you could go. There was no... Standard 10, which is now grade 12 now. You went up to grade 8, to 8th grade, which is called standard 6 in there. So they called it JC. So even there, I mean, grandma used to tell me about this story. I would sit down and listen. So the Greeks, because they were dealing with the Greeks. My grandma used to talk about Greek people. And a lot of stuff they used to talk about is Greek. So which shows how influenced the Bantu people were in, in Greek. In there. So they, they only were not allowed. So this Bantu education, there was a curriculum called Bantu education. Everybody who was black was called Bantu education. And, and we were all branded on our shoulders. Look at anybody, person who was living in the Bantu time in there. They were all branded. We were all branded on our shoulders. Just that I can be showing my shoulders. So we're all branded. So they can know which one is a, a Bantu person in South Africa and which one is coming from outside. Just to show them they can distinguish between the, the, the branded on our shoulders, on, on our left shoulders. So now these people, they were not allowed to resolve. Nobody's now, all of that is gone. No Bantu education anymore. No Bantu curriculum anymore. Everybody is open to grade school. I mean, you understand, even here in the States, everybody is can read now, no more slavery. So you can read now, read, go read, 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 black people. Read, black. They, you know, they even make jokes, you hide things from black people in the book. Because they know you ain't going to read, because then it's the indoctrination in your head that you don't read. So go and read, read for yourself. Read, empower yourself. Okay, knowledge is power. Right? So bye.